Podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors Podcast, with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome back to the next episode, episode 93 of The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors, with myself, Jackie Jones, and the wonderful Mr. Bob Cook. And this is This is our episode, Bob. This is all about (laughs) transactional analysis and how to use TA in the therapy process. Yeah, I I thought it was important we did one because even though we allude to what we were both trained in, which was TA, um, to have a podcast, I think, exclusively, even if it's only half an hour, on TA is important because we're both transactional analysts. you know, we're both psychotherapists and the model that we were trained in is transaction analysis. So we're often called transactional analysts. And often, uh, I, I, and I'll keep away from saying this on holiday, when somebody says, what do you do? And I say, I'm a transaction analyst. They have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah. They usually say something that does if you come from a typing pool or something. Or <laughs> uh, <laughs> so most people don't know what it means, but it is, a, it is basically uh, psychotherapy. It's basically around how the past affects the present, but it does have its own personality model. And I trained in seven, I trained for, oh God, 16, 17 years in TA. Um, and I then went on to train in integrative psychotherapy, which has TA at its base as well. So TA is very much a model of choice for me. Um, yeah. And there's many, many things I like about it. Uh, and of course, you've, you trained as a transaction analyst, and I know it's a model you like a lot. It's my grounding for everything. I've, mm. it, I know in the, the last episode of the podcast, we were talking about curiosity and, you know, I'm, I'm open to all different types of, of psychotherapy and therapy and counselling and CBT and hypnotherapy and everything. But I always come back to TA. It's, at the, it's my foundation. So we both think TA, and um, I thought, well, how should I start to talk about this podcast? And one way to look at this is you can call yourself a transaction analyst. Yeah. You've trained in um, the major theory of personality, uh, which in TA is ego states, and we know about parent, adult, child. Um, So that's a fundamental block block that we're going to talk about if you uh, know about what well, we'll talk about later transaction analysis proper if you know about games that's repetitive patterns and if you know about script you can call yourself a transaction analyst and if you go in, on any ta you know two-day course for example perhaps a 101 it's called the first prerequisites of ta where you'll learn some of the major concepts you'll learn those four concepts first probably um, and if you did a whole four four year training, the first year would be very much about learning parent, adult, child, and how to use it, how to use that theory of personality, how to explain that to clients, and then games and scripts that follow from that. So it has its own theory, in it, and in many ways has its own language as well. Yeah. And it makes sense, Bob. That's the thing with me. I, I know I've spoke about it a lot. I'm a very logical person, but it, it just makes sense to me. So if you had to explain what TA then was, and and I'm quite I'll quite happy afterwards, um, in two or three minutes for the people listening, how would you explain it? So if somebody said to you, Well, what is transaction analysis, Jackie? You know, on holiday. And if you I have would say to, to explain it. <laughs> people ask me that a lot. First off, I say I'm qualified in transactional analysis. Yeah. And I'll say I'm a, a transactional analysis psychotherapist, and it's a lot harder to say than what it is to do. <laughs> the first thing that I always say. And then I all when they say, Well, what's that? I say it's analyzing transactions. Mm. Because to me, that's the basic of it, you know, how we interact with each other and those sorts of things. And the parent, adult and child just makes sense to me. I know I change dependent on the situation and the people that I'm with. 
You know, when, when I was doing my training, I was in child a lot of the time because the people that were training me, in my eyes, were very parental. Oh, okay. because, you know, they were of a higher status symbol than what I was. I didn't know anything and they knew everything. So that transaction was completely different to the peers in the room that mm -hmm. I was with, where we would probably, well, I would be more adult to adult. So mm -hmm. it's exploring that connection and communication with other people mm -hmm. yes it is i think that's um analyzing transaction uh, transactions is probably a good way to start when people ask you what is you know what's the what is transactionized as you can say well basically you know trained as a psychotherapist and it's looking at analyzing transactions to aid more effective communication yes Yes, that's the key. For what end? It is. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's a lovely way to start. And, you know, I always often, if I start that way, uh, would also help people understand there's internal and external transactions. Mm. In other words, yes, you're correct. Analyzing transactions so we can have more effective communication. Yeah. And particularly analyzing external transactions. So I say, how are you? And you say, I'm very well. And I'll say back to you, well, you haven't phoned me for about a week, <laughs> have you? You know, what? where have you been or whatever it is? And you say X and I say B, and then we have a hopefully effective communication. So it's when that goes wrong though, and where communication, you know, gets blocked or communication breaks down that people come to therapy. Mm. Yeah. Now, first of all, they try to solve it themselves because, you know, for many reasons, uh, they might not come to therapy, but they might get to a place where they get exhausted trying to resolve the communication problems or, or they've got to a place where they just have given up or they've got to a place where they don't know where to look next, next to. And or they get to a place that in you know, in relationship, these repetitive processes keep happening and communication ends up breaking down uh, in many different forms. So a transaction analyst will, you know, analyze those external transactions, just as you've said. But the, you see, I think there's another step. And that is that the internal transactions, in other words, what I mean is, the transactions that you speak to yourself, the narrative that you say to yourself every moment of the day, from the time that you get up to the time you go to sleep, you talk to yourself. We yeah. all talk to yeah. ourselves. Absolutely. And those internal na narratives and those internal transactions inform our external transactions. Yeah. So as well as analysing the external transactions, we need to analyze the internal transactions, which inform the external transactions, to look at how communication is broken down, not only with other people, but with ourselves. Yeah. And for me, one of the things, you know, that transactional analysis has helped me, is I was completely oblivious to those internal transactions and dialogues that I was having. Mm. They weren't in my consciousness a lot of the time. That's right. And I think for most people, it might be the same. Um, you know, I might see four or five assessments a day. So let's go through a few. Somebody comes in and said, uh, I say, why have you come in? I said, because I'm depressed and I can't move away from depression and I get incapacitated. I can't function very well. And therefore I can't go to work and also in relationships um, you know, they're not healthy. So I need to, you know, resolve my depression. Besides other things, the first thing that I need to find out is what is, what are the transactions or what do they say to themselves mm. that keeps that depression going? And how come they don't say other things? that will help the depression go. Usually, 
the narrative that they are saying to themselves, which causes depressions, is that attacking narratives, things yeah. like, I hate you, you're useless, you never get things right, you're a waste of time. Here we are again. That's what I mean by that. What yeah. person yeah. say to themselves. They usually have they're usually very hard on themselves and they have that type of narrative in some way, which keeps the person depressed. That's what I mean by looking at how the internal communication keeps the external process going. Yeah. Okay, next person comes in. So you talked about that center and they find out that therapist them next person comes in and says you know i've come here because i'm so anxious yeah i'm so anxious i spend my day worrying and excessively worrying and i want to be perfect but i can never actually get there and i i, I worry all day and i find the anxiety creates a knit you know knot in my stomach and i just have to i have to resolve this and you know, I'm so anxious, it leaves me exhausted and I have no time for relationships. And when I'm in relationships, I'm always worrying if I'm getting it right for the other person. And therefore, that leaves me in a really exhausted position and the relationship breaks down. And I must resolve this. Yeah, that's all yeah. external picture on painting. First question. And when you feel anxious, what do you say to yourself? What's the internal transactions that are going on? Usually, A, they're very hard on themselves. They usually get into a process of overthinking. Yeah. And what I mean by overthinking is that they, they continually try and, try and gain control of the situation by overthinking, over-detailing and catastrophization, which they get caught up in catastrophizing uh, and they're all attempts to control the relationship. And at the same time, they are usually uh, have a negative set of transactions. So a transaction analyst will be looking at how the, not only the external transactions or the bigger picture, but how the internal transactions keep this negative position going. And what they need to do, not only looking at the trauma and usually the stuff underneath it, to find a way to be kinder on themselves and find a way to talk differently. Yeah. So that's what I mean when I'm saying, you know, we talk about analyzing transactions as a TA therapist. Yeah. We're analyzing the external and the internal. And probably, you know, Jackie, that is one of the most important things I like about TA because um, if we can help people have a more healthy internal transactions with themselves rather being a, rather than stuck with the negative transactions then not only would people change but their communication will be far more healthy yeah yeah and it, it's an exploration you know a lot of the time new clients come to me and they kind of want answers they want to be told what they need to do as opposed to I don't want to say working it out themselves but just that's not what it's about no it isn't and because we got trained in TA we're trained in a specific theory of personality mm. which is the idea that people are come from different parts of themselves according to different situations and for colloquial easy language Eric Byrne who you know was the event of TA talked about these three parts one is the parental part which we carry around yeah one is a younger self which is our child and one of them is adult which is in the here and now and um, it's a good model I think an accessible language to explain very complex phenomena uh, in quite an easy way. And simply because everybody can identify with having uh, parental processes, being parent, being a nurturing parent, being a judging parent, carrying internal messages in our heads, which are very similar to perhaps parents 
everybody can you know identify with a younger part of themselves which we can call child the, in this model yeah. and everybody can understand you know building up a resilient adult in the here and now so you've got an accessible way to be able to you know think about what's happening with the person and it's usually when they're getting stuck in one part of themselves and aren't able to get access to the other parts. Yeah. And often I teach clients, by the way, what I've just said to you in two minutes, I teach them in a couple of sessions or even a session. And I, I don't know many, if ever, uh, clients don't, don't identify and understand that. Yeah. And they find it very useful in a way of thinking about why they get stuck in a, a certain place and are very judgmental to themselves or they st get stuck in their younger traumatic self and they're not able then to uh, access an adult part of themselves because they're still stuck in four or five years ago or something. People understand that. Yeah. Yeah, it is It is very clear. And it, it was a big revelation to me. You know, yes, I can kind of get the parent, adult and child and how it all works and everything. But then the add-on to that is that you've got your parent, adult and child as well and how they communicate with each other and, you know, the, the internal dialogue that you've got and I've got are completely different as far as my parents and your parents. And it it's it's just how it all interconnects. Yeah. Fascinates me. Yeah, and I think if we can think about parental messages and think about a younger self and thinking about how that might sabotage a person uh, being in the here and now and unable to perhaps get resources to access resources to be more healthy yeah it, it, it's a it's a useful way of thinking it's a useful way to think about that the past affects the present yeah the decisions we made in our younger self in response to our internal or external parents, um, we often carry out today, even if those decisions are still are outdated. Yeah, and not working for us. Yeah. So analysing external internal communications, thinking of the past affects the present, thinking of what well, I just said, a tripartal tripartal model of or a three part model of the personality, is a useful model. I think the psychotherapist, you know, in a in a in an aiding help people communicating better and understanding themselves better. Yeah. And you know, I know you mentioned it at the beginning, but replaying patterns of behavior and habits and that sense that oh here we go again do you know what I mean in relationships the, I'm never going to be in a relationship like this again and then you know not that far in the distant future we end up back in a similar relationship or in a job that we feel unfulfilled in or 101 other things we replay patterns of behavior yeah and probably that's one of the most important things to you know people to understand that unless the therapist it's called script and ta mm. and we develop a plan or a way of getting by in our younger self or earlier days based on our relationship between our significant other people or lack of significant other people family or not uh then we make decisions about ourselves other people in the world and that's the way that becomes a plan the way that we see the world and then we pick people who fit into that plan to get on by and it's a way of surviving in the world and coping yeah. and that's okay if, if nothing goes wrong you know if that's <laughs> yeah, healthy, it's a good plan <laughs> you know, healthy, not a bad way to get in the world the problem comes when we move away from our parents or we grow up and we move into other relationships or other positions or or whatever often the decisions we made way back in our original 
childhood or younger self is outdated mm. and it needs to be updated and so the idea of script which is a ta um policy or so a ta way of thinking of things the idea that the script is formed earlier in childhood and we need and it can often be well, it's very you know, it's a way of coping then but become but may become unhealthy if we just carry that out yeah then we need to help the person look at those scripts and how they may or may not be healthy now and how they can actually put a new show on the road yeah so i like the idea of script i like the idea of parent adult child and i like the way the idea of analyzing internal and external transactions yeah i like the idea of what you also talked about which is sometimes called in ta games the repetitive cycles that people get caught up with which is part of our life plan yeah which were coping mechanisms but don't work so well now yeah the thing that, that fascinates me is that often with the script and the game playing well all the time basically is we manipulate things to get the outcome that we think we want when that outcome actually isn't any good for us and we try to avoid that outcome but yet somehow we've initiated it and made it happen anyway that's the bit that blows my mind with transactional analysis well if it if it was the way that we survived and it worked in that earlier template or that earlier younger self to get by in the family of origin we had to be that way and it worked to sort of extent that we got by or we defended against trauma or whatever it is um then why wouldn't we keep to it yeah but that that can that i can remember feeling so frustrated and oh my god i can't believe that i'm actually perpetuating this it's me that's doing this it's not an outside event it's not other people doing it to me i'm creating this myself and then i get excuse my french pissed off when i've created it what's that about <laughs> well, we do it to keep that plan going yes yes i will make this one yeah we do it for a sense of predictability so we know where we are and where the people are in this plan yeah we do it because it gives us a sense of identity of who we are yeah I, I understand it all now, but I can just remember the when the penny dropped in my training that this is what we all do. And it's like, why would we do that? It's a protection mechanism. It you know, we survived and it worked hundred percent. Yeah. People come to you when it doesn't work so well anymore. Yeah. And they want a different outcome yeah and the other thing i think with transactional analysis that i love having you know been a foster carer is that we can update our script we can put another show on the road and that for me fills me with hope <laughs> for people that haven't had the best start in life oh yes absolutely and going back to the beginning of this podcast and i really like the way you started it was is analyzing communications and that led me to say analyzing internal you know transactions just the idea that when we get out of bed and we can feel pretty pissed off when we might even feel depressed or we can get out of bed and we're feeling anxious we can get out of bed and feeling the world's against us mm. then just the idea that we can change to another part of ourselves and you know talk to ourselves in a different way which has yeah. been more positive means that we can change our state of being yeah do something about it so the rest of the day is better yeah and that we have a choice in that it doesn't just oh, yeah. happen to us yeah it, it doesn't, doesn't just happen yes we have yeah. made it happen yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a really that's why this is this is why we you know people can't resolve things in successions <laughs> they, need to, they need to really understand their part in the whole place and the script they took on board, which was 
uh, necessary to cope xxx and we can actually do something about this and yeah. put it here on the road but it needs we need some help with it we need somebody who will witness who have you know witnessed the journey we're going to go on to be with us and to you know um help us in the change in a way i don't mean i don't mean in that sense of infantilizing people or doing the thinking for them and all those sort of things i mean being there in terms of support and protection and trust yeah. and authenticity and help them witness their change in the transformation transformational journey they're going to go on that is really that was that was the word that was on the tip of my tongue is to have a witness mm. Mm. on the truth mm. whatever the truth is mm. i think that's really that that's so it makes me quite emotional when i think about that yeah and to i like the bit you just said there their own truth to allow them to get to the opportunity to get to their own truth mm. And be a witness in that, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, and that's powerful. It's extraordinarily powerful. So, I've learned many things in TA. Um, but you know, another thing I want to say on this podcast: you can meet many TA therapists, and they may know lots of the things we're talking about here. But, but, you know, you might then want to ask. Well, what type of TA therapist are you? And people train in, in different styles and different interpretations and have different beliefs in TA, even though what I've just said, if they believe in script, ego states, transaction analysis and games, you can call themselves a transaction analyst. But I think the style that a TA therapist comes from, hopefully, I hope, that being a relational TA therapist, where you put the relationship at the heart, yeah, you put curiosity, authenticity, genuineness, being a witness, accompanying somebody on their journey, let them have the opportunity to get their own truth. That style of relational transaction analysis is really an important one. No, I see. You can get T8 therapists who may believe, you know, change happens in six sessions. You might get T8 therapists who believe in many different types of styles of T8 therapy. But I think I'd like to have, put relationship at the heart of TA. Yeah. In other words, relational TA. Or TA where relationship is an important figure. Yeah. It's at the centre of it. it. It has to be, really. Well, no, I don't suppose it does have to be, but it, it feels comfy that it is somehow. <laughs> yeah. As well as understanding, yeah, parent, adult, child, personality model, scripts, games. So as understanding that theory, which makes, which is, you know, is a hallmark with contracts, which I haven't talked about, contractual theory, um, that that means that you have a way of thinking, but unless you also have a way of relating, which has a sense of humanity and heart in it, then things can go very differently. Yeah. And again you know talking about the the different styles that there are you know and different schools in transactional analysis and it, you know it, it's quite broad we all bring our own uniqueness into it so we've got our own personal style of being a transactional analysis as well <laughs> yeah we have our own style of being a transactional analyst that's true and and that's something that's unique to each of us and we make a different connection with the client. You know, a, a client could see five or ten different transactional analysis psychotherapists, and I would imagine they will each practice in a completely different way. In terms of style. Yes. Yes. The, the basic fundamentals are the same. Yes. Yeah. And I think that um, it's a good model. 
Yeah. It's a useful model. I mean, I do, or used to do, I don't work clinically that much anymore. Um, I I would always teach people, I'd call it educative therapy, if you like, within yeah. the settings. I would teach them the sort of, you know, personality model, talk about repetitive games and scripts. Um, so we had a common language to go on this journey with. I think that's one of the things that I love about it. And to me, that is transactional analysis, but I'm not sure whether that's just because I was trained by you and you use that or whether that's standard in transactional analysis. But I love the fact that, you know, we're at the same level in the room, the, the clients and me, they have that information the same as I have that information. And hopefully it makes sense to them like it makes sense to me. It's not like I've got a secret book that nobody can see inside. Yeah. I mean, if you go back to, like, if you go back to the beginning of TA and its originator, Eric Byrne, he, 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 it was very, very important to him when he created transaction analysis and all the principles we're talking about that people came from the therapist and the client were on the same page because mm. he came from a world of psychoanalysis in the, you know, 20s, 30s, 40s, where the, the analyst was the expert, expert interpreting, you know, a, what, what the client bought. And Eric Byrne wanted a completely different picture from that, the picture you've just painted, where the clients and the therapist are on the same page and both come from an okay position, not a one down position, one up down position. So that philosophical process of transaction analysis, I hope, lies in the heart of all transaction analysts. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so too. But we're not experts. We're actually with somebody to witness and help witness their journey. Yeah. We may help them on the way and help them look at their scripts and understand themselves more and give them the tools to be different in life. And at the same time, we're both on the road of humanity. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Well, that, that's something that I say to clients in the early days, you know, is that we kind of just throw everything in the middle of the room and then we pick it up and we just get curious about it and we explore it together. And if it's working, that's brilliant. And if it's not, then we can choose to do something different with it. And that's kind of how I, I see it. It's, it's just unearthing and exploring. Yeah, and and we did, we have the, the the concepts we talked about, you know, personality models and things we just talked about mm. in the podcast to aid us in a, in hopefully a common language we, which we can both share to help understand where we're going really, if you like, yeah. in this whole process of change yeah. together. Yeah, and I I. I love change now. I didn't used to like change. I like things to stay the same, but now I think change is empowering. And it's, we, unfortunately or fortunately, we change anyway. We're constantly changing and evolving. We can't stay the same, but there's, there was a part of me that liked to keep everything the same because then it was safe. But yeah, embrace it. Change is good. Yeah, and there's some great books around. There's many, 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 many books written on transaction analysis so i hope perhaps the podcast listeners might might hopefully through this podcast might have, you know might be sort of like oh well uh, interested in some of the things we're talking about yeah because yeah. some of them are you know like the, the ego states and and the pack system to me that's that's quite it's out there a lot of people know about that yeah that old child yeah 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 so there are some of it that you know we know about anyway mm -hmm. but the other it, i yeah i'm biased but i do i do like it it's my foundation for everything yeah well good thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about my craft and my first love on this podcast um and um i hope some of the listeners might get enthused to think about some of the things we've talked about Yes, and feel free to ask us questions or comment or, or anything. You can get in touch with us, yeah, definitely. So what we're going to be looking at in the next one is the 
cultivation of empathy for effective therapy. Again, I think we've touched on this in the past, um, but it is one of the the key things that we need as a psychotherapist, I think. Well, without it, <laughs> we'd be a bit lost, I think. Yeah. Because we'd n we wouldn't be able to reach our clients. Yeah. So it deserves a podcast on its own. It does. It does. Okie dokie. So until next time, Bob. Look forward to speaking to you. Have a good week. And you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.